Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of Spoilers, Recap, and Results. I am your host as always, PCJ, the Pop Culture Junkie, aka the Pro Wrestling Junkie. And we are just about 24 hours removed from the 2023 Royal Rumble. I uh, wasn't sure I was going to be able to get this video out. Um, unfortunately, not feeling the best today. Uh, same, my kid and, and just really our whole household are kind of under the weather right now. Uh, mostly worried about my kid. Just, you know, nothing too major. Just uh, not feeling 100%. You know, kind of stuffy nose, runny nose. But uh, he, he should be up and around hopefully, you know, by tomorrow. We hope. But anyways, uh, we're uh, kind of just staying at home today and uh, relaxing and uh, chilling out, maxing out, relaxing, all, all that stuff. And uh, didn't think I was going to get to have a little time to step away and record this, but I do have a, f a little bit of time now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my uh, thoughts and opinions about the 2023 Royal Rumble that we watched uh, last night. Usually I do these videos immediately following the pay-per-view, but again, it was a late night, went straight to bed, woke up not feeling the greatest, and just... You know, my wife and I are uh, more focused on our kid today. So I've got a little time to myself to wrap this video up and uh, share with you. So uh, let's get to talking about the 2023 Royal Rumble. It took place in San Antonio, and uh, I was... And a, I was one of the unfortunate ones that attended the 2017 Rumble. That was my first ever Royal Rumble to attend. I'm glad I got to go to the 2020 Rumble a couple of years later, uh, as that was a lot more entertaining, and the uh, the experience at Minute Maid Park was way better than Alamo Dome. Alamo Dome was an absolute disaster. I had no at all uh, intentions of going to the San Antonio show yesterday because, again, the arena was bad the last time. The parking was impossible. There was no parking. I had to park 10 blocks away on someone's yard, practically. Uh, that was the only option available except parking in other places that people were selling parking spaces, which was ridiculous. Anyways, I had no intention of going to the 2023 Royal Rumble because the card looked bad. The uh, potential uh, participants for the Rumble, potential winners for the Rumble was not very eventful, in my opinion. As many of you know, if you watched my uh, predictions with PCJ video I posted the other day uh, prior to the Royal Rumble. Let's talk about the pay-per-view. We kick off with the kickoff panel. It's a normal uh, kickoff panel. We've got uh, Caleb Braxton along with Jerry the King Lawler, uh, a couple of YouTube guys. I don't know their names. I don't care to bother. Booker T. Then we had Fluffy. He showed up to share some opinions on uh, who he thought would win the Rumble matches. And they just, you know, do the same thing. And that they always do. They talk about who they each pick to win the Rumble, and I thought it was interesting how everyone majority was saying, oh, I bet I'm picking Cody Rhodes. I'm picking Cody Rhodes, too. Me, too. And when they do something like that, they, they use it as a red herring where they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll make everyone think because Cody's coming back. It's his big return. Uh, we're picking him to win, and then somebody else is going to win uh, because that's what Vince does. Uh, he, he does not like to, you know, give the fans what they want, necessarily. So, I was surprised at the results, which we'll get into later, about the Rumble. Um, but that was interesting that they kept bringing that up as far as who they picked to win the match. And then we see what happens later in the show. So we go to the actual pay-review itself. And uh, pardon me, it is raining uh, around me right now, so you might be hearing some uh, raindrops. Uh, so hopefully you can still hear me on this video. Uh, again, doing this a little uh, <laughs> rogue style here, so uh, bear with me. We get to the actual Rumble match itself, and the Rumble begins with... Uh, who started off? Number one and number two. I'm going to forget. Uh, well, yeah, that's right. It was uh, Walter or Gunther. Uh, started off at number two. And who was number one? Sheamus, right? No, 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 I'm sorry. Sheamus was number two. Gunther was number one. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I was impressed with uh, Gunther. I'm just going to call him Walter. I always call him Walter. I was very impressed with his uh, uh, performance in the Rumble match. He lasted the entire match until the very end. That was great. It was a good way to showcase uh, not only that he's a workhorse, but he's the Intercontinental Champion. He is the workhorse. If you've got that belt, that's how it should be. That was a nice touch to actually sh showcase that. Now, the rest of the match, uh, the early part of the show of the matchup, I was very disappointed because we had guys like The Miz. We had Kofi. <coughs> excuse me. We had Sheamus. <coughs> excuse me again. 
uh, we had all these guys that we've seen again and again and it's like wait is this the 2009 or the 2023 rumble because this is embarrassing this is like 13 years apart we got the same kind of guys in this matchup uh go back to 1988 if we had the same guys in 1995 that'd be about the equivalent right i mean i know i'm off a few years or whatever but that'd be like the equivalent there like we wouldn't have the same group of guys in 88 in the rumble in 95 and if so uh we're talking one or two maybe but no we had a completely different roster in that short five seven year span and we've had the same boring roster for most of the roster that being the same uh going on 10 15 years now this is the problem okay vince you got to change it up and that means not only bringing in new guys you got to send those other people out to other to, you know other indies or aew or something but he's locking all these people into these long contracts for no reason and it's taking up space for potential new stars to actually shine especially when we keep recycling the same guys over and over in the main spot roman brock lashley etc uh so th really the match itself was not very eventful to me i thought it was very blah very boring predictable we had your typical Okay, somebody comes out into the ring for the match. They go in. They hit everybody with something like a signature move or even a finisher. And then they go off and fight everyone else. Or somebody. Just one person, that is. And then we have the next person come in. That person comes in. He punches everybody that's already in the ring. They f focus on that person as they come into the ring. And while that's happening, you have the men fighting all around somewhat still kind of paying attention to what's the spot but that's it and repeat and repeat and repeat <clears throat> why can't we have just okay number 13's coming in he gets in the ring he immediately attacks one person and they go off and fight that's it and we go back to just watching the whole the, the whole ring but it just was very repetitive we know vince is back in full power again and once again, we got the 20 camera changes for four hits or four moves or something. It's uh, very annoying, distracting. Uh, it takes away from the impact of actually hitting a move sometimes when you have to refocus your eyes on a, a, a spot that's happening. Anyways, we get to the very end, and our last two competitors are Cody Rhodes and Gunther. And uh, who was the other one? Was it Seth Rollins? No. Was it? Who was the other one? There's three people at the end, right? You know what? That's how bad it was. I'm forgetting. I'm really spacing. <laughs> I don't think it was Seamus, right? Seamus wasn't there that long, was he? Who knows? I. This is why, again, the show was not memorable. The pay-per-view matches were not memorable. But in the end, we have Cody Rhodes, of course, entering at number 30. He was uh, the final two with Walter. And Cody Rhodes and him had a nice actual match for a bit there they didn't just toss one one or the other out within you know a couple minutes of being the only two left they had a good few minutes in there to kind of really show they're both trying to win this match and in the end of course cody rhodes wins he eliminates gunther and he's going to wrestlemania and he's going to challenge roman and he better win these belts now is this the right call i don't think so i know that this is like the hero come home and and maybe but I think based on all the story stuff they've invested with the Bloodline and Sami Zayn, I would have had the Rumble be the last match, the Men's Rumble, be the last match of the show. Sami and Anuso be the last two in the ring. And you're thinking, oh, they're going to double eliminate each other so no one has to challenge Roman. And then at the last minute, Sami turns on the Bloodline, eliminates Sami, uh, Sami eliminates Anuso. And Roman sees this and realizes he's been betrayed. Sami Zayn has the shot at the title going into Mania, and he wins. That, that's good storytelling. That's my opinion. Hate on me if you want, but that's good storytelling. So then we go to our next matchup, and I believe it was the Mountain Dew Black Light... Oh, pitch Mountain Dew Pitch Black Light... What? Mountain Dew Pitch Black Matchup. Uh, basically a hardcore match between Bray Wyatt and L.A. Knight. And Bray Wyatt comes out to the same entrance with the doorway they've built when he came back back at, what, SummerSlam, I think it was? Um, or maybe even before, or was it Extreme Rules? Hell, uh, Hell in a Cell? I don't remember. <laughs> this is so hard to remember stuff sometimes. Uh, I haven't slept much. 
Uh, but yeah, whenever Bray came back, they had that new doorway. He comes out at, at the top of the stage. He comes out, and he's carrying the lantern that looked awesome. And then uh, LA Knight's already in the ring. The match starts, and we go from regular wrestling setting to something out of the Joel Schumacher Batman Forever uh, s you know, scenes. We've got neon green and pink, purple. Uh, Bray has drawn a skull over his entire face that shows up in the, the blue light, black light kind of thing. That looked awesome. That looked really great. He had some more drawing on his arm and such as well. And this match, unfortunately, though, that was the coolest thing, was just seeing how cool Bray looked with the lighting. Uh, so it was not the red lighting like they did for The Fiend. They did this other thing. And then they had a, a logo of Mountain Dew's uh, pitch black uh pasted across the, the ring or LED, or showed up on the ring by a you know, projector or a LED thing or something. Uh, but Mountain Dew did not come into play. Like, I did not see any Mountain Dew beverages or bottles or anything. I expected somebody to get hit with a two-liter or something at least, but no, nope, there was none of that. Uh, they did put a bunch of uh, confetti all around the announce table, so whenever they did a spot where uh, LA Knight did a... a like a flying clothesline off of the barricade onto Bray, uh, and they went through the announce table. Uh, they had all this uh, paper stuff splatter out to make it look like green stuff was shooting everywhere, but it was just, uh, you know, it was showing up under the black light, blue light stuff. Uh, that, was the, that was the only big spot, and then uh, Bray White hits the uh, Sister Abigail for the win, and then after that, we see uh, Bray stalks LA Knight up to the stage area and they have a uh, platform set up and we see at the very top of the platform Uncle Howdy shows up and he's about I don't know, 12 feet up and he does a almost like a flying backdrop. It looked like an elbow drop but he turned a little bit too much to where he almost did like a coffin drop onto LA Knight and for some reason the platform completely explodes and we have fire. I don't know what you know, was underneath that, but <clears throat> for some reason uh, that exploded. So uh, LA Knight's dead, or he has imploded. And then at the top of the piece where uh, Howdy had jumped off, we look back up, and now we see all the uh, puppets from the uh, Firefly Funhouse just looking down at the carnage. Uh, next up, we have the women's Raw Championship title match. Bianca Belair defending against Alexa Bliss. This match was very underwhelming, as I figured it would be, because they did not have Alexa win. Uh, they had Bianca Belair get the win with the KOD, and then afterwards they played the same old, same old Uncle Howdy video on the uh, screens, and that was it. And Alexa just sitting there looking a little evil and sad or whatever at the same time. It was just very underwhelming. Uh, did not care for this match at all, and again, that title, it needs Alexa. Uh, it needs it as bad as Bianca needs that title. Uh, that title needs Alexa a lot more. <laughs> After that, we go to the Women's Royal Rumble. And our first two for the Women's Royal Rumble were Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley was number one. Liv Morgan entered number two. Uh, they started at the same time, though, of course. And this match as well, underwhelming. Uh, we had a lot of NXT people show up, like Zoe Starks. We had Roxanne Perez, the NXT champion, uh, a few others. Uh, we had uh, a lot of people we hadn't seen in a while, like Natalia. I don't think we'd seen her for a little bit because she was, quote-unquote, injured. Uh, you know, scripted uh, scripted injury, of course. Uh, Shayna Baszler was there. We had, mm, uh, what's her name, uh, uh, Shotzi Blackheart, Tegan Knox. We had you know quite a few names that showed up in the match. That was nice. Uh, we had Michelle McCool featured earlier in the show at one point. That was uh, She was sitting ringside with a couple of her kids. And uh, during the Women's Rumble, all of a sudden, number whatever she was, uh, 20 or something, she gets announced as the next entrant, and she just jumps over the barricade and, and jumps into the match. That was, you know, interesting. Uh, it, it reminded me, obviously, of when Jerry Lawler would be doing commentary the entire pay-per-view, and then they would uh, make him be an entrant, and he would just get off the uh, announce table and go go into the ring for a little bit. <laughs> uh, and she, she lasted for quite a bit. I was surprised that that was probably the only, like, uh, I guess you could say 
legend be that that she was there a long time ago not well i guess you know 15 years ago she was you know wrestling but uh we didn't get any like lita trish melina uh of course we didn't have sasha i didn't think she was going to show people had that big rumor going around uh no naomi so i don't know what's going on with her uh i don't know if she's still in the doghouse for following uh sasha's uh backwards idea but uh i was surprised she didn't come back uh, or make a surprise return and uh yeah who knows what's gonna happen with her of course we get to number 30 and everyone's thinking okay come on it's gonna be somebody somebody big uh we didn't get the rock at uh, the men's rumble so uh we didn't get stone cold we didn't get uh you know trish or lita yet mickey james you know who's it gonna be who's it gonna be and number 30 hits and before the countdown even starts they goof and they play the Titan video, uh, the entrance video on the uh, screens and on the ring, the LED screens that are on the ring, and they start playing the music for Nia Jax. <laughs> so that gets botched right away, and that was just a sign of things to come. Nia comes out and she looks bad. She's been gone for I don't know how many months now since they fired her, but she does not look like she's kept in shape. I mean, I know she's a bigger person and that's fine there's big men and women in wrestling uh you know there's always been but it, it's a condi- you know it's a matter of conditioning and it's a matter of being able to to actually go in the ring and have that stamina and look at guys like bam bam bigelow or yokozuna you know they're big guys but they could go uh man naya came out and she was jiggling like a plate of jello she did not look like she had been in the ring at all since she left uh she gets in the ring and she has two spots. One, Rhea Ripley is supposed to show off her power by body slamming Nia. And the body slam is like one of the most basic wrestling moves, but it takes two people to pull that move off. Not just one. Even Hogan Andre. You needed Hogan and Andre working together to make that happen. And Nia completely botched it. Rhea almost falls over trying to uh, just do a simple body slam to her. Then she went for a pump handle slam. And Naya could not do anything. She flips over onto her, uh, flips upside down, and just flops onto her back. There was no, uh, <laughs> there was there was no distance between uh, Naya and the floor that doing that move. And uh, yeah, Rhea looked bad doing it. It didn't help Naya at all. So that was just a bad botch. <clears throat> so in the end, we have Rhea Ripley, and we had. Liv Morgan and Asuka. Asuka makes her return. She looks an, uh, amazing. I love that she's bringing back this gimmick that she had in, uh, I believe it was New Japan. If I'm wrong, tell me. But uh, she she used to have this extra side to her character. That she kind of brought that with her to NXT, but it was kind of like the psycho uh, Joker. You could compare it to, you know, crazy uh, killer kind of you know character. And she looks amazing. Her face paint was awesome. Her new gear looked great. But why bring her back in this rumble with this kind of new, you know, change to her character if you aren't having her win the rumble? Makes no sense to make her come out, look like this badass new version, only to get tossed out. What doesn't matter who tossed her out. It could have been Indy Hartwell, Natalia, Rhea. Michelle McCool, it could have been anybody, and it still would not make her look strong. It just killed her momentum all the time. They don't know how to book Asuka ever since she got to the main roster. She's the most over NXT champ, the best NXT champ, and they just completely have flopped on her. Anyways, we get down to Asuka versus Liv versus Rhea. Finally, they're all three on the ring apron because there's a spot and i've heard jim Cornette talk about this before saying oh look we got to have him on the ring apron to do a spot old school guys would be like no i'm gonna wrap myself around these ropes and you're not gonna even get me onto that apron i'm staying in the ring and you gotta toss me out or clothesline me out something oscar gets kicked off the apron and she's gone Rhea, uh, for that had ducked a uh, mist 
spray from uh, from Oscar hitting Liv in the face. So Liv is blind, as they said, for the remainder of the match, which was only another couple minutes. And in the end, uh, Rhea does a uh, scissor lock to Liv's head and pulls her off the t- off the uh, apron, eliminating her. And Rhea is your winner, and she will go to WrestleMania to challenge either Charlotte or Bianca or hopefully somebody else that's got the belts by then. Uh, but doubtful. They'll probably bring those two as champs. Now, who does Rhea challenge? Uh, we didn't even talk about this one earlier. Who does uh, Cody Rhodes challenge? You know, we'll talk about it in a minute. Anyways, that's the end of the Women's Rumble. Our final... Oh, no, no. I was going to say our final match. But no, 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 no. We got to go to do something else first. They took the time to take the ropes down off the ring, bring in all a bunch of sound equipment and instruments and set up a uh, musical performance by this person named Hardy. No, not Tom, not Jeff, not Matt, not the Hardy boys, not the mystery guys. No, some guy named Hardy. I've never heard of this guy, never heard a single song. I listen to the radio. I listen to modern day music and I've never heard of this person. But they set this up for him to put on a song performance, one song only. I could not tell if he was trying to be Nickelback, Kid Rock, or something else. I could not tell what he was actually trying to be. Somebody was telling me that he's a country singer. Didn't sound like country at all. Didn't sound like country rock even. So I don't know what he was trying to do. But they put on this one song performance. The crowd is, is dead. There's no one actually entertaining by this. There's no one being entertained. And the only time I heard any kind of applause was when the song was done. And then you hear a round of applause, and then they cut to commercial. When we come back, they have been putting up the ropes again, and we go to the promo package for the third Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns match at a Royal Rumble. First one was back at 2017 when Owens defended the Universal title with Chris Jericho hanging above the ring in a shark cage. That match was great because Kevin Owens makes everybody look great. And Jericho was there too, so you got, you, you, you're you not going to look bad with either one of those two guys uh, partaking in your match. Only reason Romans ever looked great is because of the talent that carries him. He may look great. He may be able to pull off a couple of moves. And I do mean a couple. That's it. Everything else, he's relied on everybody else to make him look good. And we go to this match, and it's just a basic uh, title match for the uh, Universal WWE Universal Undisputed title. Uh, he's still carrying around two belts, which makes no sense. If you're just a single champ, then you got one belt. Make a new belt already. I guess we're waiting until Cody wins, and then we'll bring in a new title. That's probably what they're going to do. Anyways, we go to the match. Roman comes out with Paul Heyman and Sami Zayn. No Usos. Throughout the match, Sami Zayn looks concerned, but you're not sure if those concerns are because Roman almost won or Romo, Roman almost lost. We don't know. Uh, in the end, we finally see that uh, Roman asks Sami Zayn to give him a chair. Sami pauses for a moment, but then he eventually does help, and uh, Roman does get the win by spearing Kevin Owens and gets the one, two, three. Other than that, the match was blah. There, it, there was a ref bump at one point where Kevin did hit the stunner, got the pin on Roman. The crowd chant counts up to like seven, eight, nine, and yeah, Roman should have lost, but ref bumps happen all the time with Roman Reigns. <laughs> anyway, so after this, we have the Usos come out. Sami Zayn thinks he's made uh, Roman and everyone happy. He's proved his loyalty. And they're about to give him a uh, one of those r- r- uh, red flower lays to put on him uh, to make him part of the actual tribe. Roman says, no, 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 yeah, you did fine, but you haven't proved yourself yet. And they handcuff Kevin Owens to one of the, the top ropes. In both hands, he's like crucified on the ropes, basically. And Roman is telling Sammy, here, I'm going to hit him with the chair. And Sammy steps in front and says, no, 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 you don't have to do this. This is beneath you. And Roman's like, wait, are you not letting me because you want to save Owens? And instead, instead, Roman says, you know what? Hey, here, you take the chair. You should do it. You're right. I'm not going to do it. You do it. And the crowd knew right away what was going to happen. You could hear the crowd already going like, oh, okay, here we go. Sammy's going to smack Roman with a chair. And it was very obvious. And then... Sammy hits Roman with a chair. (laughs) 
And he does the same thing. They made it look similar to when Seth Rollins hit Roman with the chair and they broke up the shield. Uh, he smacks Roman in the back. A headshot would have meant more, but we know what it is like with the headshot stuff nowadays. So Sammy hits Roman in the back of the chair. Paul Heyman has the biggest shock face on his on his face. The Usos are stunned at what happened. Uh, Roman's got the look of disbelief in his eye, like, whoa, he just hit me with a chair. And then, uh, yeah, the Usos and uh, Solo and Roman, they all just beat the crap out of Sami Zayn. It was nice hearing the F.U. Roman chants. I hadn't heard those in a little while, and I'm glad we had a crowd that was like, hey, we want to shout, <laughs> shout the real stuff at Roman. Uh, people are calling this, oh, Roman's got nuclear heat now. It's like, oh, he's always had heat. He's not. He has not been a success. He's been a failure. Vince knows this. Vince has just been punishing us because we didn't jump on the bandwagon with his, you know, most recent pick to be his golden boy. And he's just like, well, I'm just going to dig my heels in. I don't care if y'all do like it or not. I'm. This is my guy. I'm going to push him anyways. And that's all it is. I mean, the ratings suck. The merch sales suck. Everything. No, he's not cl anywhere close to where they think he should be. They want him to be been the next Stone Cold, Rock, Cena. Those are your three previous great top guys, and he's not even at that level. He's not. You can script him to hold a belt, win a, win a match, or lead a you know stable or anything, but doesn't matter. Crowd is going to tell you eventually. You're not. You're not getting it. <laughs> you're not getting the crowd's approval. So yeah, we leave the show with uh, Sammy and Owens knocked out and. Uh, the big drama, of course, is that Jimmy Uso and Solo and Roman all beat up Sammy. And then they look over at Jay saying, like, hey, you need to get in on this. And Jay's, like, sh struggling. He's like, wait, y'all just attacked my, my, my brother, Sammy, and this is wrong. We're, what's going on? And instead, he just rolls out of the ring and walks back to the back, uh, struggling with, like, what to do like wait this is my blood but this is my brother like oh my god i don't know what to do sorry it's just not pulling it I'm just not doing it for me <laughs> so yeah uh y'all can hate on it all y'all want but that's just not doing it for me and that's how we end the show uh overall i would give this i would say a d minus at the best grade just because at least we have the same Zayn turn but the problem is by doing it this way, and not the idea I had earlier uh, that I shared with y'all earlier about having Sammy win the Rumble, what's the outcome to this? Right now, it looks like the Usos are about to break up, but they still have those tag belts. They have both shows' belts, and it's pointless for them to have e either one of them, in my opinion. But now, what do we do? We're going to have the, the Usos just stripped of the belts and never get jobbed out to someone finally? Uh, there was rumors about taking one of the belts off of Roman without actually having him lose. That's ridiculous. Uh, he needs to start putting people over, and he's he's completely gone against that. People can say, "Oh, well, he he gives people the rub by being in the ring with him." He's not. He doesn't have that star power. It's not like you job to Stone Cold or The Rock or Cena or Triple H or Shawn Michaels, and they can say, "Oh, well, he didn't win, but he was in there with the best." Like, okay, but Roman's not the best. He's never has been. Uh, so what do we do here? Sammy and Owens are going to challenge for the tag belts? Wow. Okay. I Yeah, Sammy and Owens should have been tag champs a long time ago. But not for this kind of storyline. That makes no sense. And it makes no sense that now we're going to move on from Sammy turning on Roman. And Roman's just going to go fight Cody. Okay, again. The bigger turn would have been having Sammy turn... And then challenge for the belt. Maybe we could do something at Elimination Chamber or something. Or not Elimination Chamber, but at the next pay-per-view in between Mania, maybe. But it's just like, no, this is... Then you don't... Then what's the point of winning the Rumble if you don't actually get the belt? Is oh, so much frustration. So, uh, who do we have challenging... Uh, Rhea challenging for the women's belt? Who do, Or who do we have her challenge? Uh, it's... In my opinion, I think it should be Bel Air and get the belt off her. If, if if Rhea was not part of Judgment Day, then I'd be fine with her winning uh, the Rumble. Uh, it just it's, it's unfortunate the other participants that were in the match that I think you should have had. Bailey, Becky, Alexa, or I'm sorry, not Alexa, Liv, or Asuka, those should have been your, your choices there to to pick from for a winner. But 
Rhea involved with Judgment Day, she's just lost all, a lot of momentum of any kind of like, oh, you're you're going to be a big star. It's like, you're watered down right now, girl. You need to step away from this group. It's not helping you. It's hurting you. Uh, so I say that. I would say they need to do something ASAP with Asuka to keep her momentum going back up with this new character. The rumble didn't help her. It hurt her, I think. And uh, she needs to go into Mania and just demolish Charlotte and get that win back that she should have never lost to Charlotte uh, the first time she won the Rumble. But that's my opinion, and that's what we do here. We share my opinion. You can love it or hate it. Share with me in the comments. I'd love to hear feedback. I like to hear other people's thoughts and opinions. I'm open to your thoughts and opinions. If you can share them with me, please do that. And uh, let me know what you thought of the Rumble. Did you get to see it live? What was it like there in person? Did you get a different vibe than I did watching it on TV? Let me know. But thanks, as always, for watching and listening. I will talk to you all later. i got to wrap this up and get back to doing my thing. So see you all next time. This is PCJ, the Pop Culture Junkie. Uh, remember, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Links below. Please subscribe, like, follow, everything. All right. Take it easy, guys. Signing out.